Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Wisdom always chooses to do now what it will be satisfied with later on. Making right choices. I wonder how many choices, how many decisions we make every single day. And of course, I've been thinking about this a lot, so I'm pretty sure it's hundreds every day. To get out of bed is a choice. What time you go to bed is a choice. What you eat is a choice. What you do with your time is a choice. Your thoughts are a choice. And I know sometimes we It takes us a while to get that one because we just think, well, you know, I, I can't help what's in my head. But the truth is, is you can choose your thoughts. You can decide which ones you're going to let roll around in there and which ones you're going to get rid of. Words are another big area. We need to be very careful about what we say and make the choices wisely. What we do with our money is a choice, whether you save money or not is a choice. If you don't save any now, you're going to regret it when you're older. And the reason why I want to teach about making right choices is, first of all, it's a very biblical subject. But secondly, if you don't make good choices, then you're going to end up with regret. Now, I want you to think about that. When you don't make good choices, you end up with regret. Well, if nobody ever teaches you to make right choices, sadly, you can get to the end of your life and look back and all you can see is regret. My father died when he was 86, about four years ago. And although he received Christ about four years before he died, and I was very happy for that, I can honestly say that my father probably, when he looked back at his life, had very little to look at except regret. After 86 years, there was maybe a total of 10 people who attended his funeral. And most of those were my kids who went for me. It's really sad when you live your whole life and nobody even misses you when you're gone. And that was because he made choices all throughout his life that did not build relationships. He was mean to people. He was hard to get along with. He was bitter, critical, judgmental. He was abusive. And he paid the price for it. And each one of those things was a choice. He lived according to his feelings. And many of his feelings were motivated and controlled by the enemy because he did not have God in his life. Now, I saw a big change in my dad the last four years. But I know that he looked at me and regretted that he abused me. I know that he looked at my mother and he regretted all the times that he came home drunk and beat her up. I know he thought about my brother who none of us see very often because his life turned out pretty sad. And I know my dad regretted the time he didn't spend with him, the ball games he didn't go to, the wrong things he taught him to do. And I don't think that I'll ever forget the sadness of looking at his life and just realizing that after 86 years, He didn't have much but regret. And I hope and pray that that will not happen to any of you. And because many of you who are attending this conference and even many of you watching by television are Christians. You do have Christ in your life. Hopefully and prayerfully that leads you to make better choices. But there are multiplied millions of Christians all over the world who still make bad choices every day. You know, we talk a lot about our freedom and how Christ sets you free and when you're a Christian, you're set free and we're free from bondage and we're free from this and free, free. But you have to understand that freedom also has responsibility. So the thing is, is we're free to make our own choices. But every choice that we make literally is the seed that we sow. And every seed that we sow will bring some kind of harvest in our life. We're going to talk about wisdom this weekend. The Bible has a lot to say about wisdom and how, how good it is to be wise and how 
foolish it is to be foolish, and wisdom, and I want you to remember this, if you're taking notes, you can write it down. If, if you're going to buy the recorded messages, then you'll have it. But I believe that wisdom, and this is not a, like a fancy biblical definition, but this is my definition of wisdom, and I think it's right, that wisdom always chooses to do now what it will be satisfied with later on. You got that? Wisdom chooses to do right now what it will be satisfied with later on. We make decisions that are just little decisions that maybe don't make an earth-shaking difference in our life. We make those all day, day in and day out what we're going to eat, what kind of projects we're going to do, are we going to finish what we started, what are we going to do with our free time, are we going to exercise today or procrastinate another day, are we going to forgive, are we going to be merciful toward that person who aggravated us. But then there also comes these life-changing decisions. And I believe that there are people here that are, are at a point of real decision in your life about some things. And uh, certainly many people watching by television that you're needing to make decisions. You're not happy with your life. You're not satisfied with the way things are going. Well, the, the worst thing that you can do is keep doing the same thing you've always done and expect to get a different result. Anybody who wants to see change in their life has to change what you're doing. The good news is, is you can make wrong decisions for a lot of years, and probably in the first 20 minutes or so I'm going to talk about what happens when we make wrong decisions, but lest anybody get discouraged and depressed and think, my gosh, after listening to you, I feel like I am just really in trouble. The good news of the gospel message is that every right decision that you make helps reverse the result of those wrong decisions that you've made in the past. Now, isn't that good news? Every right decision that you make, see, even making the decision to be here tonight is going to help you reverse the result of some of the wrong decisions that you've made in the past. Your mind is going to be renewed by the Word of God. You're going to be instructed in the Word of God. We've already prayed for people to be healed. Many people have already made the decision tonight to receive Christ as their Savior. So we're just making decisions all the time. Now I want to say early in this teaching, I'd like you to try to remember this, and I really need to remember it myself. I don't believe that we can ever hope to make really good decisions if we don't slow down a little bit. We live in such a fast-paced society and we have a lot of information coming at, at us at one time that we have a tendency to just, just decide things really fast. And some of that may be okay, but some things we need to slow down. And one of the things we need to slow down about is think a little bit before we talk. Amen? And I made a mistake just tonight. really aggravated me since I was going to come over here and share this message with you, but... Somebody called from home and told me something that wasn't very nice about somebody else and asked me how they, how they should handle it. And so I told them what I felt like they should do. And then I kind of, you know, I just kind of knew in my heart, you know, I don't really need to tell that to anybody else. But the first person I saw, I had to tell them. <laughs> and the minute I did, of course, you know, the word will talk to you. So the minute I did, here comes the scripture, love covers a multitude of sins. Well, I knew immediately I should have covered that and kept my mouth shut. Well, why didn't I? Simply because I didn't give enough thought to what I was going to say. I just said something, and then what did I have? Regret. And so I had to repent about four times, although once would have been good enough. But, you know, we feel like it's better if we repent several times. Because here I was getting ready to come over here and tell you to make good choices 
especially about your words but I think even that turns out to be a good example that we all have to stay before God about this thing about choices and I guess you know like I do that sadly we spend a lot of our life doing things like that and not even stopping long enough to realize that we've grieved the Holy Spirit or sowed a seed that was going to produce a bad result in our life so two scriptures I'd like us to look at that are going to be kind of foundation for this series you know I'm a teacher a Bible teacher and so I, I really enjoy sticking with something for a few sessions and coming at it from several different angles and one thing is for sure when you leave here whether you're here at one session or all four especially if you're here at all four when you leave you are going to be very aware that you need to think a little bit more about the decisions that you make we're going to talk we're going to learn this weekend about making our own decisions and not letting other people make our decisions for us so that's going to be good for a lot of you too that are addicted to approval and have gotten into a problem of being a people pleaser and now you're not pleased you're not happy because you're spending all your time trying to keep somebody else happy that's already decided they're not ever going to be happy <laughs> Deuteronomy 30 19 I set before you well I call heaven and earth to witness this day against you that I've set before you life and death now think about this we hear these scriptures but think about this I have set before you life and death the blessing and the curses therefore choose life that you and your descendants may live when we make choices they affect us but they also affect generations that come after us and generations around us I like to say sometimes that it's like God gave us this multiple question test and he told us what the answer was before we take the test I said before you a life B death answer key choose life but although Jesus died for us to have a good life it's not a guarantee I don't care if the top prophet in town comes and prophesies something to you when somebody prophesies something to you if they're right on and they're hearing from God they're prophesying a possibility to you but not a positively because we are partners with God and every time that God we read a promise in the word there's always going to be some offsetting seed that we need to sow whether it's a seed of obedience or or what it might be all of the wonderful promises in this book are not going to fall on us because we wish they come by choices I well remember a woman who came to a conference that I had and she'd been abused and had a lot of problems in her personality still because of it she'd been listening to the messages for years and years and she said I sat at the table with the people that I was sitting with because we it was kind of a banquet type meeting and she said interestingly enough God had me at a table with several people who'd gone through things similar to what I went through and I heard them talking about well you know God showed me this and he told me to do this and I did this and then I got this result and, and then you know somebody else would say yeah and God showed me to do this and I did this and I got this result and all of them were good results and she said I realized this weekend what my problem is <laughs> now come on somebody get something here tonight she said I realize what my problem is everything that God told them to do he has also told me to do the only difference in me and them is they did it and I didn't <laughs> maybe we should stop and think about that a little bit Romans 5 19 for just as by one man's disobedience failing to hear heedlessness and carelessness many were constituted sinners so by one man's obedience the many will be constituted righteous now let's read that a little different way 
For just as by one man's bad choice many became sinners, by one man's good choice many were made righteous and brought into right relationship with God. You know, if you've been serving God for very long, there's a really good chance that somebody else has accepted Christ because of your witness, because of words you've said or a lifestyle they've seen or a change that they've seen in you or you've invited them to go to church with you or maybe you've told them about my program or some other program you really enjoy and they've had an opportunity to receive Christ. Well, if you wouldn't have made a right choice to serve Christ, then you couldn't have affected them in a positive way. My grandfather made bad choices and they affected my father and then my father's bad choices affected me. And thank God, somewhere in my early 30s, I finally entered into a really serious relationship with God. I was a Christian before that, but I was just a church-going Christian. I wasn't really making good choices. I was a hearer, but not a doer. And I did some things right. I didn't do everything wrong. I had some fruit in my life, but I still didn't understand what I'm trying to tell you tonight, that every decision is a seed that we sow, and that all the promises of God are not just going to fall on us. They're going to come because we choose to do what God asks us to do. God never tells you to do anything unless it's going to be for your benefit. And I know some of you right now, God is probably dealing with you about some things that are very hard for you to swallow. He may be telling you to be kind to somebody that just is so ornery and you just think it's not fair, it's not right. But you see, if you'll do what God asks you to do, you're the better person. And if you keep that heart full of bitterness and resentment, it's going to cut you off from the presence of God. You're not going to enjoy His manifest presence in your life. It's going to grieve the Holy Spirit. You're going to feel grieved because the Holy Spirit's in you and He feels grieved. It's going to make it difficult, if not impossible, for you to get your prayers answered because the Bible says, if you don't forgive others, I won't forgive you. But half the world's mad. And it's not just outside the church. A lot of Christians are angry, and they're bitter, and they're resentful, and even angry at people they go to church with, and it's a choice. But I feel, I feel, I feel. But it's, see, that's why God gives us free choice. Choice says that I don't have to live by how I feel. And choice says I don't have to live by what I think. And choice says I don't have to live by what you think. Yeah, that's a good one. And I think some of you need to make some decisions. I think some of you need to make some decisions that are going to help undo the results of some of the decisions that you've made in the past. And a good amen wouldn't hurt anything about right now. Amen. I hate that feeling of regret, regret that, that disappointed, I'm sorry, grieving over something I've done that I don't know now how to go back and undo. Have you ever said something and then wished you hadn't said it or done something and wished you hadn't done it? <laughs> I have a fresh example. <laughs> have you ever wished that you would have said something to somebody while you had the opportunity and then it was too late and you couldn't say it? Wish you'd saved money when you could have and Maybe you could have paid cash for your last car instead of making another big car payment. And, well, you just didn't do it. It wasn't that God didn't put it on your heart to do it. But you just didn't do it. Maybe you got a car paid off and God prompted you, well, just take that money that you've been paying on that payment and start putting that away so the next time you need to buy a car, you can just pay cash or lay down a whole bunch of cash and not have all that payment. And we just don't do it. Now, is that going to send you to hell? No. <laughs> but you won't have regret while you're making that six, seven hundred dollar car payment for five, six, seven years. <laughs> now you can live with regret if you want to. Some of you are just kind of looking at me like, wonder who she's talking to. You know, <laughs> you can live with regret if you want to, but you don't have to. 
It's much better to make the best decision and not have all that regret. Anybody ever say, well, I regret I haven't exercised all these years? <laughs> you will when you look at yourself in the mirror someday and everything that used to be up here went down here. <laughs> and let me tell you something, when it goes, it goes fast. <laughs> now you're just like, I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> Tonight when you met Dave, I told you that he, we had his 70th birthday party a few days ago and people just almost call us a liar when we tell them how old he is, how young he is. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm not supposed to say old. <laughs> when I tell people what his age is, how's that? And, uh, but part of it is he's exercised for 50 years. Well, you know, I can look at him and say, man, I wish I would have done that. Well, why don't you do now what you're going to wish later that you would have done? I wish I wouldn't have eaten so much for dinner. Well, it's too late now. It's in your stomach and you're miserable. <laughs> I wish I would have spent more time with my kids when they were young. Now I don't feel like I've got any relationship with them and on and on and on and on and on and on on and on. Now see, if me preaching this tonight stirs up some stuff in you and you start thinking about all the bad choices you've made, <laughs> it's not under condemnation. It's just to, to let us know that we shouldn't keep doing it. <laughs> this can be a time of change. This night, right here, in this conference in Canada, and for every one of you watching this program, probably a lot of you are watching it in the morning, this can be a time of change for you when you say, it's time for me to grow up, be responsible, and start making choices that I'm going to be happy with later. Don't live like there's no tomorrow because tomorrow always comes. Can I tell you something? God sees everything we do. Even you guys way up there. <laughs> and you watching at home curled up on your couch thinking nobody knows you're there. We know you're there. I had a guy give a testimony a few weeks ago in our TV studio that just cracked me up. He said, I was not living for God. I was doing drugs and drinking and all kinds of stuff. And, and he said, one day I was leaning back in the recliner drinking a beer. And he said, you look, my mother had you on. He said, you look through the screen. He said, you lean back in that recliner drinking that beer. He said, it scared the tar out of me. I got saved. And... <laughs> you know, it's so amazing to me to think that we have this conference here, but people are going to see this in 40 some odd different languages and many, many, many different parts of the world. And can, can you imagine, you know, just a little thing like start making better choices. What a radical shift that can make in your life. I mean, when God said, I set before you life and death, please choose life that you and your descendants may live. And he didn't mean breathe. He meant live. He meant have a life like God knows life. Because the decisions that we make, every decision that we make does affect our kids. My grandfather's decisions affected my father. My father's affected me. Somewhere in the middle of all the mess in my life, I managed to start making good decisions. And now my kids have a much better life than what I was having at their age. And their kids are even ramped up way beyond that because now, you know, at just seven, eight, nine, ten years old, they know stuff from being in Sunday school their whole life that I didn't know till I was 50. And so every choice that you make, you deciding to be here tonight will affect your family. Those of you listening to the word by TV, and I mean taking this seriously, this will affect your family. We see it all the time. Turn people's lives around.
Well, godly wisdom is one of the most important and the most precious things that we can attain. And the Bible does say to seek wisdom. Proverbs 8, 11 says, For skillful and godly wisdom is better than rubies or pearls, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared with it. And if we seek the wisdom of God for our daily decision-making, we won't live in regret later. Insurgency have gone around Iraq, persecuting Christians, forcing them to leave their villages, their homes, their businesses. Many of those families have seen their children abducted, their husbands being killed right there in front of them. The Iraqi Christians are persecuted intentionally in Iraq. So all the families are leaving. The majority has come to Lebanon because they feel safe, because there's a big Christian community. When we looked around, uh, and uh, so the need uh, of the Iraqis, we felt the Lord is leading us to the target this group of people for the love and compassion we can provide. Hand of Hope was the first ministry to come alongside with us. Hand of Hope said, well, we want to be the hand of Jesus to the broken world of Lebanon. And a children program when kids come and learn about Jesus and go back home and they sing what they have learned, the worship songs, the families, they start asking questions. Why are kids so happy and joyful again? Why do they have their smiles back again? Because in Iraq, the kids stayed home 24-7. They're not allowed to leave home, to play, to have fun, because they're scared of car bombing, of kidnapping uh, for ransom. So here they're finding their joy again, and it's exciting for us. Joyce Meyer makes this happen. Joyce Meyer uh, supports the Heart for Lebanon Iraqi project. So all the food we buy, uh, if it was the snacks, the lunch, the trips we do, the camps, the retreats, all of that, and alone we cannot do it because it's a big burden and it's high expense. And uh, they want to help us bless the Iraqi refugees by that. So we feel cared and loved by that as well. You know, I don't think that we can underestimate the power of habits in our lives. First, we form habits, and eventually they form us. In my new book, Making Good Habits, Breaking Bad Habits, you'll discover that the freedom from bad habits lies in filling your life with one good habit after another. And with God's help, I believe you can put an end to struggling with bad habits and discover a new level of success in your life. Get my new book today. In dit boek vertelt Joyce hoe het aanleren van goede gewoonten je leven kan verbeteren. Nu ook verkrijgbaar op DVD. En profiteer van de setkorting via onze website joyce-meijer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. De computerdeskundigen van Joyce Meijer Ministries werken keihard aan onze Nederlandse website. Hey, does anybody need any more coffee? Be right back. Ga naar onze nieuwe site joy-meijer.nl en volg ons op Facebook.